This is a bulky vision. It's comfy, it's spicy, and was one of the best-selling compact SUV in China a few years ago. But when it comes to the new one, well, it starts to fall behind, especially in space. But don't worry then, because now Buick is giving us an electric equivalence of the Envision. It's bigger, it's smarter, it's fancier, and it's called the Electric E5. Before getting to the car, let's see how Buick's electrification is going. Back in 1996, GM, who owns Buick, became the first mainstream company that produced the world's first electric car, the EV1. But 27 years later, we can see that Buick is not doing that well in making EVs. This is the first new energy Buick in China, the Village 5, which was obviously built from a Chevrolet Volt. It has an efficient hybrid system, a solid chassis, and a great vehicle dynamics. But due to a high price that didn't match the segment and a compromised headroom for lower drag, it did not so well. And then there was the second one, the Village 6, which was originated from the Sykes Rowway EI5, or the MG5 EV in England, and was bigger and much cheaper than the 5. But this time, it is the terrible dynamic and build quality that sent customers away. As for the latest one, the Village 7, built from the Chevrolet Bolt, well, I can only say that when it was launched in China, it has almost all the shortcomings of the previous ones. So today, here in Guangdu Automotive Touring Ground, owned by SGM, I'm going to test this SUV that shows all the resources and abilities Buick can have in electrification to see if GM can rekindle the success in 1996. I'm Harris, you're watching my EV. Nowadays, when you see an EV on the road, you can immediately tell that it's an EV by the look of it, because modern EVs have veered off from traditional ice car look to display a futuristic impression. But this car isn't. It still has some kind of grille and without a fastback for lower drag. The overall appearance is pretty similar to the Envision Plus, a Chinese exclusive long wheelbase version. You can only realize that it's an EV by looking at some details. Apart from the thick grille, there's still a typical long wheelbase and a thick side skirt for the battery. Well, that's pretty much it. Maybe for most EV enthusiasts, this kind of design is not appealing enough. But for potential customers of Buick, this conservative yet dignified look might be a better choice. As Buick claimed that the design philosophy of the exterior is pure. Well, apart from this pretending grill, I think they did a great job. As for the interior, Buick described it as sophisticated simplicity. Just look at this curved 6K infotainment screen. It's gorgeous and really match the whole vibe. According to the official description, its spec and actual performance can even compete with the latest iPad. Furthermore, the infotainment has the newest OS from GM, very similar to that of Cadillac Lyric and Buick Century that we tested earlier. We didn't get to experience the specific functions, but the appearance, smoothness, and operating logic were all pretty satisfactory. But truth be told, for a screen too narrow, and is obviously partially blocked by the wheel, it's a bit too wasted. Although it's a very smart and futuristic EV, it still remains loads of traditional physical buttons, switches, and knobs, which I'm very excited to hear about because they're very handy. For example, the adjustment for steering wheel and rear view mirror are in proper positions, not integrated to the screen. The window controls are still in conventional style, not in an upright position and the aircon controls are on a different panel, which can be operated without looking. The only thing I had to get used to is the gear lever, because it's, it's electric obviously, but it didn't go up and down straightly. You have to push towards you, then you select your gear, well, like this. Um, it's not a very smooth operation, but it kind of reminds me of that good old fashioned way to change your gear. You can see this as the, uh, the gear lever sticking to your steering column in an electric way. Additionally, there are two things that confused me. 
One is that, since there are already many physical buttons, why not making the controls on the upper right corner of the screen into physical ones? It's so difficult to operate. The other one is that, here on the most important and prominent part of the center console is a big knob, just for volume. I even thought it was a gear selector. If you can operate infotainment via this knob, well, like the BMW iDrive, that will be excellent. And now, let's get in the back. As a big 5-seater that has a 4.9 meter long body and a 3 meter long wheelbase, the back is really not that roomy. At least a 6.3 guy like me can't get a very good leg room. But the seat itself is of high quality. It's fit, it's soft, and it's very comfy. As we mentioned earlier, this E5 does not have a fastback design, so even if there's a proper sunshade, it still has a very nice headroom. One thing to complain about the back seat is that the, uh, the backrest is a bit too steep and it's not adjustable, so it isn't that relaxing as I hope. Since we are already at a proving ground, let's take it for a drive. The hardware is a bit ordinary, no active adjuster suspension, nor any advanced technology for steering. It has only 180 kilowatts and 330 newton meters, which is even weaker than a 2 liter turbocharged engine in the old emission. However, after driving on various surfaces, I found that the handling of the car is pretty solid. The chassis is excellent, the pedals are linear and easy to control, and the MVH of this Buick is amazing as always. In my opinion, the only thing can be improved is the steering sensitivity in high-speed corners. But for an SUV that beautiful relaxing, it won't bother. The last time I was here, well, coincidentally, I just drove the Envision exactly. And now, after driving this car on the same road, there's one thing to be ensured that, well, speaking of chassis tuning, the steadiness and the calmness of GM series product is absolutely in the leading level in the same price range. If there's anything can be described as special, the left flappy pedal on the steering wheel is definitely worth mention. Yes, it is for the curse, but in a different way. The strongest curse will kick in only when you hold it. You can even use it to stop the car without touching the brake pedal, which means it's some sort of one pedal mode. Even though the braking process is very smooth, I still found it a bit unnecessary using my left hand to brake. To me, this seems to be a perfect solution for a problem that does not need to exist in the first place, because if I do want to brake, I use the brake pedal. There's no doubt that the electric E5 is an exceptional car in any way. It has a proper size, comfortable seats, sturdy chassis, and generous configurations. Although it looks like there's not many electric features, it still has the all-new virtual cockpit, super cruise driving assist, plus safety and high efficiency brought by the Outram platform. In my opinion, it will be better than the Volkswagen ID.4. However, what lines I have for this car is complicated. The good news is, judging from the market, it has a very bright future. As it aimed at the blank space between 200k and 300k IMB or electric SUV in China, except the mighty Tesla Model Y, the E5 only has some uncompetitive joint venture electric SUVs like ID.4 to compete with. The bad news is that this segment will become highly competitive in the next two years. Nearly all Chinese mainstream car makers have shown their attention to compete for this market. More importantly, Neo, Li Auto, and Expo will all produce SUVs within this price range in the near future. So the window for this Buick is only about a year. In 2025, this Electra E5 is expected to officially enter the North American market, joining the um, Cadillac Lyric and the Chevrolet Equinox EV which are its sibling models to cover the electric SUV market in different price levels. So, would you like this kind of, well, traditional looking but smart EV? Or the other way around? Let me know in the comment. 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with your friends. After all, your support is what drives us to keep on. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.